Hello everybody and welcome back. The Known World, June 6th, 1445. We're still continuing on as France. And this episode I made a promise of two things. <laughs> to do a shorter length episode and to also go to war with England. So pretty much that's what we're looking at right here. It looks like it's the banners have, since we've logged out of the game and logged back in, the banners are sort of updating here telling us we could actually hire an advisor. We've already looked at this, what this means. How much money are we making now? Um, we Let's see who's available. The trade efficiency guy. You know what, I think we actually will just pay him. It's a duck in a month, but it's going to increase our power, right? And we actually haven't hit this button yet to, to sort of influence where are we going to be focusing. Um, where are we going to be focusing here? I believe we can hit this. I want to say we can hit this once every... 10 years, but I'm not sure. Military is a good thing, right? We, we talked about how we want, we want to stay up to date on the techs. Military technology is going to give us a big edge if we can get this before we fight England. Or at least for follow-up wars, if we can be ahead of England on military tech. But I think it just, you know, without thinking too much, without analyzing the future too much, I think it makes sense. We don't we don't need diplomatic power. We need, we need military power. So if we hit this button, we're just going to See, this was already getting us a modifier, negative one. So, so basically, this is a focus, right? So this subtracts one from here and subtracts one from the admin and the diplomacy. And it adds two to the military. So we're specializing in military right now, despite the ruler um, ruler's efficiency. And what is the cooldown on this? 20 years. Okay, in 20 years, we might want to change that depending on what's going on in the world in 20 years. So, cool. Take care of this. We already know we can build stuff. We're not worried about it. We don't care about the disputed successions. And it's still reminding us that, okay, this, this mission is ready to go. We'll keep that up there because we do want to remember to hit that button when we go to war. Alrighty, so there's really no reason to be touchy with the uh, touchy with the speed here. Let's unpause the game and just keep rolling here. So last we noticed, um, Portugal was allied with um, England. In fact, this actually... The game actually starts off like this, and I think it's to protect Portugal from Castile, and it's partly to protect England from France. And it's not that Portugal is really that big of a deal, but... Oh! Oh, we clicked on Portugal. I was like, wait, did England lose their alliances up here? No, they still have them. They still have them. We were clicking on Portugal, and that's why it switched. That's why it switched. Okay. What would be cool is if if uh, Portugal went to war with Morocco. That'd be kind of cool. But here's the thing. I know we said we'd wait. I know we said we'd wait. We uh, Are we paying for our ships? We are paying full price for our ships right now. Let's get our ships. So if we hold control, if we hold control, then when we do, when we do a box select, it'll only grab ships. So even if we don't know where our ships were exactly, it looks like they're over here. They're kind of doing a mission, right? They're they're hunting. What are they doing? They're hunting pirates, I think. So we just held control, box selected all of our all of our ships, and so we're just going to actually move them here. As we'll see, um, there's a way that they can potentially help us in the war. So let's just get them in position. Let's stop doing the pirate thing. We can't do anything about it. The, these uh, these nations down here. I want to say, are these the Berber? Berber nations, yeah, the Berber tradition. These nations are going to be raiding the, the Mediterranean all the time. We can't do anything about it. It's got to live with it. Luckily, we don't actually have... It's going to be much more of a headache for someone like Aragon. Holy cow, is it going to be a headache for Aragon? But for us, it's it's fine. We don't have much on the Mediterranean at the moment. That will change. That will change. Oh, interesting. Saxony actually would like to hire Kondatiari. So this is one of the expansion features. It's something you can do with your military during peacetime. It, uh, we can actually, we can actually um, lend them our troops, and they can pay us money to do so. And it's actually pretty big money. It's pretty big money. But there's so many other things that we could do with our troops, uh, like we can drill them, right? So right now we're just choosing to drill them. I'm kind of wondering, is England going to ally anyone else? Like, do we need to strike now before they get a bigger ally? But I don't think so. Because just like us, we have four diplomatic relations, right? 
that we can have. Um, I think we can suspect that England probably has about the same number here. The AI is not going to go over this number. We can go over this number, but the AI is not really going to go over this number. Whoa, 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 whoa. The surrender of Maine? This is Maine. Oh, wait. Surrender of Maine. We don't control Maine yet. The truth is we don't really want Provence to get this because we need to take this. Don't we need to take this for, don't we need Maine in a mission? Gascony, right? Yeah, we need to own Maine for this mission. But it does say every English foothold in France must be reclaimed. I'm wondering if when Maine gets passed on to Provence, if... The mission will no longer require Maine. But I'm kind of worried that if Provence gets this thing, it could delay our ability to... Uh... I'm assuming they already thought this out, right? Oh, France takes control of Maine. Oh, okay. So, so this is an interesting event I've never seen before. So apparently in the treaty, um, in 1444, the country of, or the county of Maine was promised to France, but it was never actually handed over. So this is kind of like, hey, you know, you need to give us what you promised us. Lose 10 prestige, a truce with France. England gets a truce with France. Add a truce with England. Provence's opinion of France goes down. We don't... If we knew about this, here's... This is just kind of the funny thing. If we knew about this... Restoration of Union Casas Belay. I'm wondering if... Um, oh, England will declare war on us. Well, does that mean that our allies would be called in? How is this going to work? I've never seen this before. This is a historical event. I've never seen this before. But what I do know is that when we're drilling... See how we're drilling? It's actually reducing the army's morale. And it just, it doesn't mean that they're actually like sad or anything. It just means they're actually um, not ready for war. So we need to actually kind of wait a little bit on this. Holy cow, we were not ready for this. We were not ready for this. But we need to take advantage of this because we don't want to create a truce. We don't want a truce with England. No, we don't want a truce with them. We want to fight them. I just wasn't ready for this. But this means that they'll declare on us, I think. I, I, again, I've never seen this before. Let's also get our forts up and going. It is go time. Now, I'm wondering, do we actually need all the forts at full? Or can we, like, turn off uh, this one here? And I don't think Portugal is going to be in the war, so let's turn that one off, too. Let's just keep... Where are our forts exactly? I know we kind of, we have to kind of move, we have to drag this around so that we can get a better view of what's going on. Our forts are here and here. We probably want this one on. So we're kind of just letting time pass. I don't know the exact amount of time that you have to, to make a decision here. I believe if we do nothing, it will take the top decision. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I believe... That's what will happen. We're just letting our morale come back a little bit because we were like really caught with our pants down on this one. That's for sure. Apparently England is actually using their spy network to, to gain, to try to uh, gain claims on our land. So where did they just do that? And it say they just got a claim on our land. And we can see that. Actually, let's go to the diplomatic screen. We can see that a little bit better. No, I'm not seeing. Oh, no. Yeah, down here. They took. They claimed a uh, burn down here. Or Bairn. Bairn. I don't know. Okay, let's just hit this button before we lose the opportunity or something crazy happens. Well, that doesn't help us at all. That literally doesn't help us at all. Okay, so we are in the war, and this was completely unexpected. We did not 
this is so weird because this was not the war that we expected, but I think we had, it was just something that came up. We had to make a decision and we've made the decision. So now it's saying our country is at war. This is the war screen down here. It shows the English crest because they're the war leader on the other side. It's just us versus them. Apparently, Castile is not going to be in on this. This is a little unfortunate because it would have been nice to declare the war and, and be sort of in charge of what goes on here. But I think... So England has to take Paris. The English-French Unification War. They have to try to siege Paris. That'll never happen. So England is going to try... That's their war goal, is to take Paris. Okay. As long as we don't allow them to take Paris, we're going to get a ticking war score. This, and up, this percentage down here is going to be going up. And we'll be winning the war. If this is at 100%, then England basically... Like, England, it, that's an unconditional surrender, essentially, if, if we can get this to 100%. Like, they will, they have to take, they have to, they lose the war, and we get to do pretty much whatever we want. Um, if this goes, of course, to negative 100%, then the opposite will happen to us. So the tricky thing is here, so let's look at this. So we're now at war with England. We can go to the diplomatic screen and see that we're at war. Our allies, though, were not, no, none of our allies were called in. Because this was sort of like an event-driven war. So what can we do here now? We have the game paused so that we can think about this. Our armies are not fully ready to go morale-wise, but the thing is there are no English troops on the, on the European continent. So we should be able to still take advantage of this while the troops sort of get a little bit more organized. Let's actually sort of be... Let's split this unit up here. And again, because I've played the game before, I do know that areas with no forts only need a thousand troops. This thousand troop here can come and siege this down because there's no fort there. And we'll take this 11,000 here with the leader and he'll head over to the Lombard or whatever and start working on this fort. Working on this fort. We already have Maine because that was part of the event, which really is kind of a crummy event if you think about it. Let's send these 12,000 up to uh, here. So that we can see if the English are going to be making any moves. Again, we're just going to take a stack of 1,000. We're just going to do a little bit of a carpet sieging. And the reason why we're doing this... So we can't get through uh, Burgundy. We would have to get um, military access. But they probably won't give it to us because they hate us. Now, they might give it to England, and if England has military access through Burgundy, then we have military access through Burgundy. And it's not that they gave us permission, it's the fact that, hey, you have your housing enemy troops in your territory. We're going to ignore that, and we're just going to go into your territory anyways, and other people won't care about that, because it makes sense, you know what I mean? We're not going to be played the fool. So, if England ends up getting military access in Burgundy, then we'll be able to go up here and, and siege Calais. Wait, Provence refused to... I didn't even know Provence was asked. I didn't want to... I don't want to call these people in. Oh, okay, okay, wait a second. They were called in. They were... We got Castile on our side. We got Castile on our side. But uh, Provence said they didn't want to join the war. That's really unusual for the AI to do that. And that's unfortunately we built the uh, royal marriage with them. They didn't even want to help us in the war. So we have our troops moving right now. And we're sort of carpet, we're literally just carpet sieging them. Okay, England has not gotten military access from Burgundy, but we're kind of keeping a, paying attention to that. Because what England could do is they could try to get troops here and, and sort of come into our country from this angle. Oh, we forgot, we want to hit this button because we're at war now. So this is giving our morale a boost and our land maintenance modifiers getting reduced so we don't have to pay as much for the troops good making some good money even though our war war typically is going to you know war is going to reduce our our financial stability usually okay so we've taken this again so the way that this works is these provinces here are being sieged by this thousand because there's no fort here it's uncontested it just takes 33 days after 33 days we will uh we will take control of these provinces 
not permanent control, but in the terms of the war, right? And then when the war ends, we have to actually try to ask for these in the peace deal. So the, the fort, as you can see, it says there's a negative 35% chance to siege down the fort in the next 30 days. In the next 30 days, there's a negative 35% chance. So we need to, over time, the longer we siege this, though, that negative number is going to be growing into a positive number. And again, the more siege cycles that we go through, um, it's just sort of stacking on the effectiveness of our siege. There we go. Now it's a negative 21%. So we're just working on... Okay, so Castile is actually battling here. And what we could do is we could try to support them. But here's the thing. They have no heavy ships here. England has six heavy ships. I don't think that's a good fight. England is going to win that engagement. It's unfortunate that Castile was so sloppy with their troops. We need to make sure that England doesn't try to drop troops on us. I don't know, are these transports? No, these aren't transports. They have 18 transports here. That's interesting because they obviously don't have any troops here. They're transports. They should send their transports up and grab troops from England. See, this is the thing. The AI, I will admit, the AI is not particularly intelligent when it comes to uh, delivering troops via like amphibious assaults. The truth is we will see them... We'll see them coming anyways. You know, the nice thing about getting our allies in this war, the nice thing about this is actually it kind of distracts them. It doesn't, it means they're not going into any silly wars themselves. It kind of keeps them busy. Kind of good to keep, keep your buddies busy because otherwise they're doing silly things. So it looks like the game is telling us that England is blockading our ports. That's one thing you can do with your ships in war is you can use them to blockade ports and that, uh, increases the siege efficiency and I believe it also affects our ability to make money and, and trade oh look at that the papal state has actually excommunicated this is a, a pope action they've actually so basically they've excommunicated the catholic nation of Provence so Provence wasn't playing game was uh, playing the game with the church and the pope basically hates Provence um because they're probably rivals, I suspect. Yeah. Not only is Provence an enemy. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So they're rivals to each other. Provence and Papal State. So the Papal State, the Pope specifically, has the power to excommunicate a, a Catholic nation. And then we now, what that means is that other Catholic nations can actually like attack Provence based on the Pope's authority. So the Pope basically gives us permission to uh, to attack them. Ooh, nice. Good job, um, Switzerland. So Switzerland is actually in the war as well. They're our ally, they, they honored the call. And they're actually over here sieging down Calais because they got, they got the access through Burgundy. So even though Burgundy doesn't like us, they like Switzerland and they let Switzerland move their troops through. Now, at this point, we should, yeah, it shares with us. If they have military access through Burgundy, we have military access through Burgundy. So it shares. All right, new trade research is heretical. So we can lose diplomatic power or prestige. I think, honestly, we're probably just going to lose the prestige. Because again, we should be getting a good amount of prestige from this war. It sucks to lose prestige. Like, prestige is good. There's a lot of things that this affects. Like, you can see that now we're getting a negative modifier. All these different things. But at least it is growing yearly. At least it is growing yearly. And we don't want to lose the power. The power, as we've seen, really important for our technologies and a lot of other... All of these power points have, like, multiple uses. But they are the most important resources in the game. And the most, like, finite, right? The ones you wish you had more of, always never have too many power points okay so what we can do here is so john burrow i believe is this guy's name right okay, he's the amazing siege leader we can actually switch him to this army here as long as an army is in a friendly territory generals can teleport i know it's kind of weird but generals can teleport from one group of troops to another as long as they're in friendly territory the funny thing is they used to be able to teleport out of enemy lands, but they changed it. And now it has to be friendly territory, friendly territory, but they can teleport. So we've moved John Bro down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put him in charge of the siege. 
As you can see, instantly he has a positive effect. So we have him now in charge of the siege down here. So I'm honestly... Oh. So Burgundy is actually going to war with Provence. They probably want this piece of land here. Does Burgundy consider this part of their land? No, they just have a claim on it. So this is not... This is technically part of Provence. Like, they are doing a hostile action against Provence. This is not a truly legitimate war. It's it's legitimate in terms of them, they have a claim on it. They built that claim because of a spy network, right? They used their spy network to build the claim, which we can actually do in Aragon now. We're going to have to think about that in a second. So Burgundy is now at war with Provence. That's going to be a pretty easy war for them. In fact, Provence doesn't even... <laughs> Provence doesn't even want to get, like, uh, like, oh my gosh. Provence can't even get over there because the troops are stuck here. Sometimes the AI leaves a little bit to be desired. What are you doing, Castile? Send your trips, uh, send your ships home. Stop doing that. Because Castile is just like getting again. The AI is very smart, very efficient with its ships. Castile pops its head out, and England swoops in and destroys them. Again, we cannot win the naval battle. It's not going to happen. Now, the question is, what is your alliance network? You have no allies. <sighs> Provence, Provence, Provence. See, this is unfortunate because we'd rather be, have Provence exist so that we could fight. Like, it'd be better for us to fight a, a Provence than a Burgundy, right? Now, to get the same land, we're going to have to go through Burgundy once they take all this land. Not good. Whoa, what's going on here? England's actually struggling. Oh, for, uh... Let's try to help. Let's try to help. So, so Castile brought the heavies. Castile brought the heavy ships. They have... You have three heavy ships here. We're good. This is a good fight now. As long as... England doesn't swoop in. We gotta be very... We have to be very cautious here. But we are waiting. We're just letting time pass. Waiting for the siege. We got a 35% chance to get the siege. But for the most part, England isn't uh, really doing anything here. England can't get across the ocean. It makes it worse. All their transports are here. They're literally stuck. England is literally stuck. But here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. If we actually... Between us and Castile, if we can actually weaken uh, the English Navy, we might be able to make an amphibious assault of our own on the English territory, which would be kind of difficult because they, all of England's troops are over in England, right? They have, they have 34,000 troops, so it'd be uh, tricky to actually land on England. So what's going to happen is they're hiding, their ships are hiding here in this province, in this port. As long as they have the fort, that's all good. We're just going to give the clergy a little bit more influence. These are just little events with the estates. We talked about the estates, I think, two episodes ago. Um, all we need to do is we need to make sure it doesn't go over 80%, because at 80%, then they start thinking that they own the world, and they start demanding stuff. It's it's not great. Okay, so what's happened is we've now sieged this land, so that they obviously they can't have ships in a sieged port. So these ships are now going to be pushing over to here, and hopefully Castile is standing by to help us here. But these are also mostly transport ships, so this should be a good fight for us. Should be a good fight for us. But it would be bad if um, we can kind of get a progress on how this battle... So this is a naval battle. England has low morale because they've already these ships have already been in battle and they've already lost battles. England is trying... Okay, it looks like England is trying to get down with its... Oh no, it's going the wrong way. England is taking its heavies over to here. Then what are you doing? So we're, we have a lot more morale. We can also get a sense of... Uh, I think, are we on the left or the right? I don't even know. We're on the right. So some of our ships are getting damaged, but nothing significant. I mean, the morale... Once the morale gets zero, the, the battle will be over. The battle will be over, but we are... You can see the bar here. This summarizes it as well. 
we're definitely defeating them. But I want to make sure we don't lose any ships. They're losing. We're, we're taking out some of their transports. The heavies are just ripping into them right now. They have no more front line. They, the, the light ships that they had protecting the, the transports just got wrecked. Okay, cool. That was a nice little naval battle there. In fact, we could try to pursue... Now, these ships are retreating, like they're not, we can't engage them until they, uh, what we can do is we could try to sneak over here. Okay, so here's England, here's some of their troops, they're just kind of, they're literally watching from across the strait. That's funny. I'm kind of wondering, could we actually get... Alright, so what we are in a war with England. Let's pause the game for a second because we have 45 spy network in Aragon. And one of the things that we're wanna, gonna wanna do down here is fabricate a claim. Because again, we don't have any reason to attack Aragon right now. So to, we could actually say that, hey, you know, look at this. This piece of land here is actually ours. And that's what the, the spies are basically setting things up in a way that they can create a lie the rest of the world that this is actually our piece of land so if we hover over this this is a uh, Rusillon or whatever it's this, this this province here so we can hit this and use 20 of our 45 spy network to grab that cool. now if we go here we have a claim we have a claim on this land and now we can use that to fight them in the future now it turns out that every additional claim costs a little bit more nice we got a so we got a new cardinal so last time we lost a cardinal now we've just gained one. Leone is now a cardinal. The uh, the province is providing a, an individual to to be a cardinal in the uh, in the papacy. Nice. We're back up to two on that. So now that we're at twenty five, we can actually do another claim. Because again, now it's it was twenty. Now it's twenty five. Every time we get a claim, it's just going to go up. And we could actually grab Barcelona. And we're doing that. We're not technically touching here land wise, but we are via a sea tile. So it is going to allow us to claim Barcelona here. All right. Let's let's that's good enough for building the spy network. We've done enough of that. So we can now we have a free diplomat. We can actually sort of test the waters here. Like we now we've we've sieged down all this land. We're still waiting for this to get sieged, for sure. But we can kind of test the water and be like, okay. What's England going to take? What are they not going to take? And what they're not going to take is anything across the water because we haven't sieged any forts over here. Yeah, we're demanding areas without occupying the forts. So there's no way they're going to let us do any of this. Wow, they only have three forts? Huh. We don't have enough transports to get over enough troops. I'm just trying to think here. Like, if we tried to get troops to to Devon, they would see that and they would intercept. We wouldn't we wouldn't be able to get troops. We can only transport eight at a time using our transports. That's not enough to uh, to land a uh, an assault team. We if we could get all of our troops over simultaneously, then we could start fighting over here. But what we're going to do is we're going to, again, we're going to get John Burrow here, and we're going to take him here so that we can finish the siege sooner rather than later. Let's move our ships over here because we can blockade this, and again, that's going to allow us to siege quicker. Now we're at a 21% modifier. It went from like negative 21% to positive 21%, so we could get it right here if we're lucky. Nope, but it went up to 35, so we're making progress. I can't believe Provence, like, broke their alliance with us and that allowed Burgundy to just attack them. If they had their alliance with us, Burgundy would not have made that move. They would have had to have considered my strength. But instead, they just decided not to honor the call for whatever reason. 57%, let's go. We're just kind of waiting for the siege. Nope. Failing over here. But Portugal's not in the war because we didn't attack England and England attacked us. So, 
once we get this siege down, we'll get a good chunk of war score because again, forts are very valuable in war. Very valuable in war. Oh, we... This is nuts. Okay, we actually have Castile landing troops. We have Castile landing troops right now. Okay, let's wait for that siege to go off. There we go. We got the siege. Okay, let's get let's get people here so that we can actually make a move and maybe get troops onto Engl England's uh, England's land here. What's going on is England's ships actually got kind of decimated. They have four heavies. They only have one. Wow, we could we could actually take the fight to England. This is actually going to be way more exciting than I thought. But here's the question. Let's let's go into here and let's just see what are they going to expect if we want to take back our own land? Oh, this is not going to work. This is not going to work because we're not the ones that declared the war. So this war, the intention is for England to do whatever England wants to do. We're not in the driver's seat on this. If we start taking land, they're going to be upset, but we can humiliate them. We can do other things to benefit us. Dude, that's funny. Force them to steer trade towards France. That's really, really cool. I've never seen that before. I don't know. I think what we might want to end up doing is if we can take like Cornwall, it'll give us a uh, it'll give us a foothold, right? It'll give us a foothold. So if we could somehow manage to siege this down, what we need to do is we need to reinforce uh, Castile's troops here. So let's get. We can only take eight thousand at a time. But once we take a province, here's the thing. Once we take a province. We can then start shuttling them faster. We can get there faster. So if Castile sieges this, we'll be good. Okay, so to get them on the transports, we have transports here on the on the dock. We have to hit this button, attached to transport. So we're selecting the 8,000 troops that we would like to attach. Now they're attached. It gives a little icon here to show that some of them are attached. Now we're going to go off. And we're going to come up here. And we're bringing the 8,000 troops along. England shouldn't be able to do anything about this. They're just too discombobulated right now. Once Casillas takes this, we'll be able to just land our ship here. Okay, nice. And they transferred it to us. So now let's funnel all of our troops over here. Oh, the heavies are on the way. Hmm, this is tricky. This is tricky. What we're going to need is we're going to need military access. Will he even... Will... Okay, if we hit this button... What we need is we need Castile's fleet up here. Castile, where's your fleet? Where's your heavies? Way down here. That's not good. That's not good. And Castile has 20, 11,000 troops here doing nothing. Navarra. We'll fight that. That's fine. That's a light ship. We'll fight a single light ship. We killed it. Nice. Now let's let's try to test England here. Are they gonna cower or are they gonna fight? They're leaving. They're leaving. So there's some symbology that we can look at here. Let's get more troops over. Another 8,000. Wow, that's really, really good. So our ruler is now a scholar. Which means technology cost is minus 5%. That's really, really good because that saves us a lot of that power projection. Okay, Castile, hold your horses for a second, Castile. Hold your horses. Be very, very careful, Castile. Okay, we are like deeply in hostile territory here. We need to get more. We need to get like literally all of our troops need to start working our way up to England here. This is, this is, uh, this is interesting.
You want to know something funny there, guys? I, uh... <laughs> I set a timer. Well, I didn't set a timer, but I looked at my phone to see what time it was when we started. And I can't remember what it actually was when we started. Now we're so engulfed in this, and I'm thinking we're about to... We are about to start taking the fight to England, like mainland England. This, If we're going to chop this war into two seconds, this could be a very bloody battle. I'm kind of wondering if maybe we put a cut in the episode here. But I really don't want it to be like a super short episode either. So I'm just trying to like think to myself, it's like, what time did we start? Okay, okay. They need they need support. Let's get down here and threaten. Oh, they don't even have a lead. Okay, there's their leader. Whew. This is not looking good. This is not... We got 24,000 French troops, and believe me, the French know how to fight. But uh, Castile is here with no leader. And in the marsh. Castile, that is not a good fight. That is not a good fight. Let's, let's faint like we're actually going to engage on this. And see if England backs off. This is not a good fight. So what, what's going on here is this is a marsh, so there is going to be a minus one die roll for the attacker. Now, it seems like England's the attacker, right? No. They have a fort here, so they are inherently the, always going to be the defender as long as they control this fort. So England's actually, or Castile's actually the one that's going to be hung out to dry here. This is not good. We were not ready for, for England to come up like this. Bad, bad, bad. We need to get down here. We need more troops over here. So here's the thing. So England is locked in. This little symbol, it's very hard to see, but there's a little lock here. And this means that they are committed to this. They cannot back out. We can still back out. So once you've gone halfway towards a province, like, like as you can see here, we can do this as much as we want. But if we spend time going towards this area and we get halfway there, we are locked in. This, in fact, it even shows it visually here. There's a line here. I don't think we want to fight this. I think... No, I do not think we want to fight this. Let's let's just group up with our units here. What we might do... Okay, I'm changing, I'm changing my mind around here. Let's check and see the river crossings. So if we click on the province, we can get a sense of which uh, provinces connect uh, are separated by rivers. So we're going to get a river crossing if we if we attack this way. It's listing this province as having a river in between it and this province. We can see the river too. Um, let's say a river flows between these two areas. But there isn't one from East March. It's not listed here. So let's get everybody to East March. And with 24,000 troops, we will attack into this. We will attack into this. They stack wiped the steel. That's not good. No, they didn't. Let's let's attack into this. Let's just see what happens. This is going to decide whether or not this is going to be a bloody battle or not. They're coming at us. We're coming at them. Great. More infantry. Bring them on up. So this looks like a crazy battle. They have low morale. Oh, we don't have a military leader. Uh, none of these are going to help. I mean, the, this guy would help us, but he's too expensive. We might have to retreat on this. We might have to retreat. We have a better leader, I assume. Maybe not. They have a 2-4-3. We have a 4-4-1. Four, four, okay, we are winning the battle. As you can see, we're very carefully watching these bars here. The problem is they do have more troops than us, so we're going to start going down fast. But right now, we're technically winning the battle. We have more morale. Like, our actual base sort of morale is higher. We have the same military tactics. They're going down fast. We just got a huge roll, so there is sort of a little bit of RNG here. We got a 9. Plus 2 from fire. We have better fire phase than they do. So the battle is sort of taking place in phases. And here are our cavalry on the side. The cavalry sort of flank from the sides. 
It looks like it's going to be tight, but it looks like we should be winning this. Oh, we rolled a zero. Okay, we rolled a couple very, very, very bad rolls. And we actually just lost. All right, that's not good. If Castile can get in here with a little bit of morale, it might give us the, the edge. Nope. Okay, and Castile, Castile really messed this up for us big time. Big time. Castile really ruined that for us. So what we need to do here... We're going to put our troops... Back. Why is it not letting us take... Whoa, 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 no, 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 no! That's not what we didn't want to fight this. Why don't we have military access? We just got through here. We just got punked big time. England is now the Pope, too. Great. Fantastic. Okay. The steel really messed this up. So we're going to have to pull this out of the jaws of defeat up here. We are technically winning the war because we have all of this land under our control. But, um... This isn't looking so hot. That we really... We really goofed. We really goofed. So our armies are not full strength here. This this army has been absolutely decimated. We can see that our 1,000 men regiments are like just like a fraction of what they were. Literally, these should all be 1,000 men. So it's also saying that we're reinforcing um, men every month from our manpower pool. So that's good, but... Let's get our other leader on the case here. We have a healthy 14,000 here defending the strait. Bowsers. Okay, so that Castile kind of just willy-nilly went in here with 10,000 troops. Did ignored the fact that the British were or the English were pushing on them. Didn't even have a leader on there. I don't know what they thought they were doing here. And basically got destroyed. And then we tried to help them and uh, rush things a little bit. It would have been better if we had all of our troops here. We would have easily won. We we almost won a battle down 10,000 troops just because of um, how low the morale was for the English and how strong our, our units are. All right, but let's, uh, let's pause here because this war, we are going to win this war. We are going to win this war. In fact, I'm going to pledge to say that we are going to not only win this war, but we are going to siege down a good chunk of England here. Like we are going to uh, completely dominate them in this war. So, unless, I don't know, we can, we can look and see what, the, what we can get now. But let's take a pause here, because this war could, could go on for a little bit here. I mean, this is, uh, this is a pretty important war, and it's a big war, so let's take a pause in the episode here. Or not in the episode, but in the, in the whole thing. And um, hopefully, I don't know, I'm looking at the time, hopefully this is closer to 30 minutes. We'll see. We'll, we'll keep working on that. Next time, I'll actually make sure I set a timer so this doesn't happen again. But uh, yeah, we are thick of, in the thick of it with England. Um, it was going great. Then it's now kind of turned for the worse, but we'll, uh, we'll pull it back around. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, feel free to comment if you have comments. Uh, like if you like, dislike if you dislike. So... I think that's what you're supposed to say at the end of these things. Thank you so much, everybody. I will see you guys on the next one.